Miracy. For so much of my life, actually my entire life, I remember telling my parents, like, I'm going to be a millionaire. I was so obsessed with money. I was so obsessed with success. And I got that success. And it was just not what I thought. It completely destroyed me. Hello, I'm Katie Valentine, and you're listening to Soul Savvy Business. I am a soul-minded spiritual entrepreneur, a Christian minister, and a New Testament scholar. Don't let any of that scare you. I support all paths to the divine, and I use tools like chakras, dreams, and intuition to get there. On this podcast, we explore the intersection of business and spirituality. What do I mean by that? Too often, we separate our business selves from our spiritual selves. But in doing that, we don't leverage the full potential of either one. This series aims to help you fall in love with your own soul so that you can live your most fulfilling and successful life. On today's episode, I'll be talking with a business coach with a passion for helping others live their purpose. But first... In every episode, I offer a tip around abundance and your spiritual journey. Today's tip comes from a philosophical place, something that helps us get even deeper than mindset to relate to how we see the universe. I run in a lot of anti-capitalist crowds who suggest that capitalism itself leads to scarcity for many and extreme wealth for a few and is often exploitative. When I became an entrepreneur, in the back of my mind was a little bit of a tape the idea that I might be taking resources from someone else, but I knew that wasn't really the full story. Something deep within me longed to name that there are injustices in the world. The prophets, Jesus himself, named those without compunction. And also that there is truly enough for everyone. The interview here on this podcast a few months ago with Laura Hartley helped me consolidate some of those thoughts that I have that I do believe the time for capitalism that is exploitative, that exists solely for profit and have winners and losers doesn't have a place for the thoughtful entrepreneurs that I serve. But I don't think we have a name for the thing that is emerging. For my abundance, it was essential for me to acknowledge the brokenness of the system that we are in that leaves some without, but also to be a part of the system that is establishing something new where abundance truly is for everyone, including myself, and definitely including the people I serve as part of the sacred exchange. This is not a tip with a concrete action, like to take a walk or to find your crystal, both of which you know I love, but instead to enter that place of deep reflection about who you are, what you offer, and how it does help everyone shift forward into a world of awesome abundance. My guest today is Drea Brown. Drea is the founder of Drea Brown Marketing Agency, and she's had quite an interesting journey to get to where she is today. This journey includes corporate sales, being hospitalized for burnout, living in a Buddhist monastery, and starting her own highly successful business. Welcome to the show, Drea. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. Oh, I'm excited that you're here. I'm excited you're excited. And I'm just curious if that tip resonated with you on abundance and kind of that deep reflection. It's a little bit of an unusual tip here on the podcast, actually. So I was a little nervous offering something like this and curious what you think. You know, it's something that I've pondered much in my entrepreneurial journey. It's like, is capitalism good or bad? Is it abundant? Is it lack? You know, does it take away from others? Is it adding to ourselves? And it, it's it, it's if we didn't have capitalism, we wouldn't be solving the world's problems like we are today. Yeah. It's just, I mean, we are literally adding more abundance for everybody. Yeah. And I don't want to be reductionistic. Like there's not just one thing that capitalism is. I think when we see it and it's most, there's, there's it's probably integrated capitalism and exploitative capitalism. But my spouse reminds me sometimes that countries that maybe practice capitalism are also highly innovative. Yeah, absolutely. And I think everything is really, truly changing in the future, like where capitalism is really going to take place and where it's going to be coming from, you know, where everyone's becoming more open hearted. 
I think it's kind of like a pendulum where it has been imbalanced for a while and it's been kind of like seen as evil. But now the pendulum's swinging to the other side where it's for more open-hearted entrepreneurs. Those are the ones that are going to be succeeding in the future. I like that. And who knows what all these systems will become and yeah. what names we'll give them. So yes, I love the the kind of theme of open-heartedness. Yeah. Beautiful. Well, we're going to be talking about your religious and your spiritual background in just a moment. But first, tell us what kind of word or words you use when you refer to the divine. You know, I feel like every year it's different. Something else connects me deeper into a different word. Sometimes it's source. Lately, it's been God. Mm -hmm. Um, And I'm kind of starting to transfer more back into source. So I would say those are probably the most meaningful words to me, source and God, universe sometimes. And it really depends if I'm talking to somebody else about it as well, especially when you're coaching. It's like, what do they resonate as well with? But ultimately, like inside of me, it's source and God. Well, tell us a little bit about your religious or spiritual upbringing and what that looked like. Were you raised in a particular faith in a particular tradition? No, I was not. I was, we never went to church. My mom says she's Christian, but definitely doesn't practice. My dad is more agnostic. And yeah, I really was not around religion for the most part for the most, most of my life, like almost my entire life. And then I had a really intense spiritual awakening where I was, I was from the corporate world. I was just nonstop going hustle, hustle, hustle. And then all of a sudden I got really burnt out and I got hospitalized. I started having panic attacks. It was horrible. Yeah. It was the craziest thing ever. And it brought me literally to my knees, you know, for so much of my life, actually my entire life. I remember telling my parents, like, I'm going to be a millionaire. I was so obsessed with money. I was so obsessed with success. And I got that success. And it was just not what I thought. It completely destroyed me. And um, yeah, I, I was hospitalized for about 10 days. And I was actually in a psychiatric ward for about 10 days. And I was around just, you know, other people that I didn't thought, think I resonated with before. And I just, mm-hmm. it just really made me ask, like, what is my purpose? Why am I here? I'm obviously not doing life the way I'm supposed to. And I just told myself, I was like, I could either make this the worst decision of my life or the best decision of my life. Yeah. You know, and it changed everything for me. And I just, I sold all of my stuff, every single thing that I owned, except like some clothes that I took in my small little backpack. And I traveled the world with the intention to find myself. And when I was, you know, finding myself, I met a Buddhist and he started talking about Buddhism. And I was like, what is what? Like, it, I've never, ever been spoken to like that in my entire life. The, the things that he was saying, it was so foreign and it was like my, my ego couldn't grasp it. But something deep inside my soul knew there was so much incredible truth behind it. And I just needed to know more. And he talked about this 10 day Vipassana meditation And like silent meditation. And I was just obsessed after that. I had to go find out exactly what it was. And I literally didn't even meditate before, never in my life. And then I went in like balls deep to the wall, like 10 hours, 11 hours a day meditating, no speaking. Oh my, that's a serious commitment. Yeah. Oh yeah. But it was totally life-changing. Like that, that, I think those are the few instances where it was totally life-changing. I became completely immersed and I had to like, well, I had to dig deeper within my soul and like I did some plant medicine and I just like, I really tried to seek every spiritual experience that I truly could. Like you said earlier, I lived in a Buddhist monastery and I really just studied with the monks there and just kind of just, I just want to know more. Like what, who am I? Why am I here? And just the amount of books that I've read is ridiculous. And then, yeah. And then I started my TikTok spiritual teacher and then now I'm here. Okay. And so do you consider yourself a Buddhist now? No, no. Tell us what's, if you give any, if, do you give yourself a name or a label or is it spiritual? What is it? <laughs> I don't know. I try to stay away from the labels and identities because I used to say spiritual until very recently. And I just don't want to be identified with anything because I think I can garner so much incredible wisdom and information from all of these sources. And then I'm like my own religion. Like I have like this own, my source is my religion, like inside. Yeah. And I'm really curious, what are your spiritual slash not spiritual practices now? Yes. Reading is a big one for me. And I listen to a lot of audiobooks. And I know that's probably not like what people are looking for when you say, what, what are your spiritual practices? But it's like, yeah, for me, it's, it's just like, I have to stay connected. If I don't stay connected every single day, I get disconnected. 
And then, uh, of course, meditation every single day, without a doubt, journaling. I'm really self-reflective. And I ask myself, what do I need that day? And then I just have to have stillness. Maybe it's talking with a friend that really makes me feel totally in the moment and totally in the now, or just being with my friends or dancing, ecstatic dancing, just feeling the music or art, or I mean, there's so many things. It's like, it's not just one thing. Maybe it's nature. There's so many things. That's like my spiritual practice. Yeah, it sounds like some um, like stillness combined with some kind of um, action, whether that's yoga, art, reading, and that that can kind of take its own form every day. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's talk a little bit about how your spiritual beliefs, your upbringing, where you are now have impacted your feelings about money and abundance. And I'm especially curious from your pre- corporate Drea to now when you had this kind of radical, (laughs) you know, radical experience. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I didn't, I will say I didn't understand what money was before at all. You know, when you think of a million dollars, it it didn't have any meaning behind it. I didn't even know why I wanted it. It's like so cliche, you know, I thought the bigger house would make me happy. I thought just, you know, having really nice like status or like my friends seeing me with all these like dazzly things all the time, like that would make me happy. But ultimately, obviously it left me burnt out. It left me devastated. And I do find myself starting to go back into that little like that game. But Mm. just because I keep myself like connected every single day, that's when I can find myself, okay, I, I need to realign. I need to realign. And it's it's a constant thing. It's not like now I'm perfect. Now I totally understand. Now I know what money is, or now I know what abundance is. You have to reconnect. You know, like you totally understand deeper than you ever understood before, but then tomorrow you don't. Something very small can just inch you off track just a little bit, but it's really being self-reflective and and just knowing when you're off track, what are the signs? What are the subtle signs? And for me, it's it's being agitated. It's not being grateful. It's like wanting to like hurry up. You know, it feels constricting. And in order for me to gain abundance, I have to be abundance. Yeah. So how can I be abundance first? How can I be abundant? How can I be generous? How can I be that love that I'm just trying to get to the world? And why do I want abundance? Well, I want abundance because I want joy. Why do I want joy? You know, like, we'll be that joy. Bring joy to the world. Bring joy to my business. How can I bring in all of these feelings into my business that I want to feel myself. Nice. Well, um, thank you for all of that. Let's um, let's talk about your business. I know you now run a successful business called Drea Brown Marketing Agency. Tell us a little bit about what you do and who you serve. Yeah, so we're a marketing agency. We were full service marketing and now we're transitioning to doing more coaching services. And what we do is we help empower women to achieve their full potential in life and business through video. I think video, it's one of the most incredible ways to make a true impact in the world. There's nothing more powerful than having a video, unless it's face-to-face. That's most powerful is face-to-face. But when you're wanting to do it at scale, there's nothing more powerful than being able to speak to the hearts of many through video and truly making an impact and really connecting with people inside their hearts. And like, they're like, oh my gosh, this person's actually speaking to me. When, when you can do that at scale, that's when massive impact happens and the world changes. <laughs> Amazing. Well, you said something interesting, and this is kind of from your website, that you teach clients how to balance strategy and energetics. Yes. <laughs> in their marketing and in their branding and on social media. Unpack that for us a little bit. What does that mean? Oh, yeah. Yes, yes. It's like, I think it's 80% energetics, 20% strategy. But I think what's really unique about the way we've been doing business is the energetics. Because I know when I got 600,000 followers on TikTok in four months, I was able to tap into a certain energetic frequency when I did that. It was me embodying that person who literally already had 600,000 followers in every sense of the way. And it wasn't just like some of the time, it wasn't me just trying to manifest it in the beginning of the day. It was like, I literally felt that like every single day I was like, what is the type of video that someone who, or like, what is the type of video that I want to post today as I embody this person who already has 600,000 followers? Literally every single second, it was like without a doubt, without a shred of the doubt. And there was no second in my mind that didn't feel not that way. And it was just like, you know, it just exponentially happened. And all of a sudden I was sitting there on a live and I was leading a live meditation to 43,000 people. And I was like, what 
is going on? What is going on? Like, it was like, I literally felt this moment so many times in my life before I actually am now experiencing it. It was like that surreal moment. I've experienced this moment before. Everything that's happening now is your past thoughts, every single thing. And so that's yeah. what I felt. It was like, th- these are the past thoughts that I've been having. And it's just literally bringing this beautiful reality into place. And so I'm curious how you teach people energetics. And I love this yeah. conversation because it's kind of getting into like the quantum realm and it's mindset, but it's obviously much deeper than only mindset. It's it's really, really knowing who it is that you serve and feeling that kind of soul to soul connection with them. Yeah. And so, yeah, how do you engage the women that you serve into getting to know their energetic self? Yes, yes. That is such an amazing question because I have so many women that come to me that cannot feel their body. And I can relate to that so much because I used to be there. I literally could not feel my body. I couldn't even have a conversation for more than a minute because I literally could not pay attention to anybody. And now here I am on a different side where I can have stillness for, you know, a while, more longer than I've ever thought I could. It's it's easy for me to connect with what they're feeling. You can literally, it's going to sound crazy, but you can place your consciousness inside of that person and feel what they're feeling inside of your own body. That's amazing. And one that seems to relate so much back maybe to that abundance conversation we have, no matter what the system is that we call it, but getting away from this idea that it's zero sum. Mm-hmm. That for for one woman to expand means someone else has to shrink. Yes, yes. Right. In reality, we can all expand and abundance and money and everything can expand. And the second is the post I made in my Facebook group today, and I just pulled it up. It says verbatim, your 3D physical wonderful body is your biggest metaphysical instrument. Oh, yes. Comment below. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yes. Oh, man, I love that. I need that. I need that on my wall. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. You're right. We we do get so disconnected from our bodies and it's maybe not intuitive for most of us when we're starting out that that's the connection with our bodies is related to our business. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. It's it's all connected. Every single thing. It's all connected. Yeah. And that's a powerful way that we can tune into you know, where we are, uh, where we are in the process of serving others. Yes. And that's what it's about ultimately. It's really serving others. And it's not just saying that. It's really having that energy because I know I'm not totally aligned with myself. It's really because I'm too focused on myself, too focused on what is trying, what what is making me happy or like, what do I want to do? What do I desire without thinking about the rest of who I'm actually serving or what's my mission? What's my biggest why? That leads to an interesting question that I like to ask everyone. And uh, you've partially answered it, but I think we can keep on digging. What do you? think of about the words being in alignment? Like, what does that mean for you? For me, it's when you tap into that creative flow. It's when you tap into this unlimited energy that you don't even know why you want to wake up at six in the morning or five in the morning. It's not as complex as we like to make it. It's really, really simple. It's like, does this feel good? Does this feel heavy or does it feel light? Either it's expansive or it's constrictive. And That's a really good question for me. Like, is it expansive or constrictive? And when I can feel myself out of alignment, it it feels like like there's something wrong. Like it feels like there's something wrong. And I think in order for us to realize when we are out of alignment, we really have to be self-reflective, more self-reflective than we already are. Like, I mean, I I I mean several times a day asking yourself, how do I feel? What am I feeling? Slowly, the more you know yourself, the more you start to see when you're out of alignment the more you start to see what causes you to become out of alignment, the more you start to see what causes you to be in alignment. What what feels good? Well, I love to dance. What else do I love? I love helping people. I love big ideas. It's like, what do I, like, what makes me feel totally in alignment? And like, what makes you feel out of alignment? Well, it's, it's not feeling gratitude. It's focusing on negative thoughts, focusing on just, yeah, things that don't feel good to make it really simple. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, I think that actually that simplicity is probably very helpful. And it also occurs to me that, um, I don't know about you, but certainly for me, 20 years ago, I wouldn't have known quite the same because I didn't know myself as well about when I was in alignment or not in alignment because I was sort of very rarely in alignment. And so it's also just a continuous journey. And that's not to say there's a right or a wrong. It's just that the more we are self-reflective, the more we can 
more opportunities we have to be in greater alignment. I don't know if that resonates with you. Yes, yes. Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Yeah. But the corporate Drea might not have known what being in alignment even felt like. Oh, absolutely not. So tell us, give us just a little bit of, of tidbit. What Do you have one or two go-tos that help you get back into alignment? Mm, nature. Nature. Always nature. It's like, sometimes I won't even know how much I'm in my head until I get out in nature and start walking around. And when I get out in nature, I'm very intentional. It's not like just going for a walk, inviting someone, taking the dog, which is totally fine. Nothing wrong with that. But like getting your hands a little dirty, like going to touch that bark and feeling what that bark feels like. Like when was last time like people touch bark or like, you know, like really literally smell the roses or smell the flowers or look at the way the shadows are playing. It's so beautiful. And just looking at the shadows and being curious about the shadows or curious about textures or curious about the sounds all around you and just really being absorbed in the moment. That is probably the best dose of medicine there ever is just being out in nature and being really intentional with being in nature. Um, And my second one to get back in alignment, I would say, I'm going to give two, meditation. (laughs) But that's like a given. Yeah. But I would say doing something that I absolutely love, like something that really, really brings me joy and not feeling any guilt or shame about doing it. Because I think as business owners, we oftentimes do feel guilt or shame about doing things that bring us pleasure that don't add to our bottom line or don't add to our business. So it's really just doing something I totally love. And even if it's in the middle of the day when I think I should be working, just doing something, maybe da- like I know I keep bringing up dancing. I love to dance. It brings me joy or yeah, yeah, going to get my nails did or, you know, like whatever it is, whatever brings me joy, like having an hour and a half coffee break with my partner. We love doing that in the middle of the day. Um, yeah, whatever brings me joy, that will really bring me back to alignment. It occurred to me that what Drea was talking about for getting back in alignment was ultimately about being in the present moment, doing things that bring her joy, like dancing, having a cup of coffee for an hour are all about getting out of the head into the body and just being right here, right now. Going back to the beginning of the episode, it's been a consistent theme for her that she discovered when she had her big breakdown and her revelation. I can sense the Buddhist value of taking each moment as it comes here. This is a value found in many different spiritual traditions, and it's a core teaching in therapeutic circles to help reduce anxiety. When you think about it, our causes of distress are usually fretting about the past, which we can't change, or worry about the future, which hasn't happened yet. Practicing being in the present moment is a valuable solution for our frenzied brains, for our anxious schedules, and it's one that does have deep spiritual roots. This is where practices like meditation and other mindfulness can be a lifesaver for you, whether you find those in a spiritual tradition, in neuroscience, or in your own sense of self. Don't be afraid to bring in dance, coffee, or anything else that brings you back to yourself, to who you are, to being right here, right now. All of these practices help us experience the present moment, whether it's joyful, sad, or neutral, and to just be with what is, without worry about the past or anxiety about the future. These practices also help us build new neural networks in the brain. We literally expand our minds when we are in the present moment. Maybe like Drea, you'll also find that they help you get back into alignment. Well, um, tell us what has been your biggest challenge in building the business you have now, especially now that you're in this transition period, because transitions are by nature can feel very challenging. Uh, So yeah, what's been your biggest challenge? And we want to know how you overcame it. Yes. The first thing that popped up in my mind is shutting out the noise shutting out the noise. And that has been so difficult because we want to stay open-minded. We're curious by nature. We're learners. And I love to learn. But sometimes you just don't know which path to go down. And everyone says they're right. But the thing is, everyone is right. And every path is right. It's just there's one path that's right for you. So it's like finding this balance of listening to the information and keeping open-minded. But it's just like keeping that balance of not following shiny objects, but really just like filtering out information, like what is, and then relating it back into your truth. Well, what feels good to me? 
what feels easy to me because business does not have to be hard. Ultimately, it's like going back inside and being like, what makes the most sense to me? It's like filtering out everything and always going back because you have the truth. Only you have the truth. Only you. That's it. Like no one else out there has the truth. No one else knows your business more than you. So it's ultimately like if I had to give someone advice, it's ultimately you have the power for your own business. You are the one that makes a decision. Do not give your power to other people to make your business decisions for you. I don't care who you are, even though you have all these incredible, incredible marketers, genius people out there telling you this is like the thing that you need to do. So ultimately, yeah, going back into yourself. I'm just curious what that, you know, the challenge that you face is kind of tuning others out but while still remaining open and, and non-defensive, mm. but listening to that own inner voice. I'm just curious if your own spiritual journey is part of that. Oh, 100%. If I don't bring back everything to my spirituality, I get lost. I get totally lost in this business world. I know it. I've done it so, way too many times. I wish I could say it. I learned it the first 10, but I didn't. Right. And yeah. I'm just such an emotional person. I get excited very easily. And I know that about myself. So I've really had to be observant of when I feel that emotional, like surface level excitement. And I know that. So I, even if I do feel it, and that's totally fine to feel it because we're going to feel these emotions. I'm not going to suppress anything. I'm, I'm going to feel these things all the time. I do it every single day. But it's like going back into myself and asking myself, like, is this the right step? You know, did this person, were they just able to take away a little bit of my power and maybe manipulate me in some way? But it's really ultimately going back inside myself and asking, yeah, it's just, it, it keeps going back to that. Like, keep going back inside and ask, like, is this my surface level or is it deeper? And I, I can't tell you how many programs I've bought just because I felt that surface level excitement and then I never completed them or I never even started them or they did not resonate with me at all. So the more that you start to know yourself and start to be intentional and start to really keep going inside, then, you know, it thankfully becomes less. Drea's balance of experiencing her emotions and excitement about potentiality and balancing that with the power of observation is so, so telling for us. I can sense the really deep Buddhist roots for this practice of taking a step back and observing her emotions. This is a technique that I also have learned over the years in different therapeutic spaces, and it aligns with spiritual teachings across many traditions. Specifically, we have to get out of our own ego selves and even our emotions, not by denying them, not by suppressing them, but by observing them. From this place of observation, we can make decisions that include our emotions, but are not ruled by them. This is also really helpful for the practice we spoke about earlier, living in the present moment. Maybe this is what Jesus means when he says to consider the lilies of the field and how they have everything that they need and that we should be like them. I don't think that Jesus here is saying to never plan for the future, but rather encouraging us to always find time to be in the here and the now, the present moment. Even the simple act of observing lilies is one that helps center us, keeps us focused on the here and now, and assist us with being fully immersed in the present. Well, so Drea, as we're wrapping up, do you have any advice or wisdom you'd like to share with the listeners? Yeah, well, I would say before I was doing a full scale agency where we would do everything, literally like all you would have to do is show up on camera and record and then you're going to be on every single social media. Like that's all you have to do. And it felt really, really bad to me because I got out of alignment and I started thinking about the money and it was great money, but it felt so heavy. And so moving forward, I've been having to unravel all of this stress. And now I honestly, ultimately, if you're a business owner, it's finding that deepest why, finding your mission and finding your core values. And I know people will say that and it it's like, oh yeah, go find your mission or go find your deepest why. But I mean, like sit down, spend an entire week minimum on this minimum, but like ask yourself what is really important? Because if you don't feel energy or if you feel stuck or if you feel you're just like not excited about your business, I swear this is going to help. This is going to ignite a fire under your butt because I was feeling like this for a few months. I was feeling stuck and I was just feeling unmotivated. I was like, what the heck is wrong with me? Why do I feel so numb about my business? And 
just very recently, I've started doing tons of mission statements, tons of like getting my values and my why, like my deepest why. And like, what is it that I'm truly here to do? What is my work in this world? And why is it so important? I'm in the spot where I'm not trying to do anything. I'm not pushing or forcing anything. I'm literally letting everything just fall into place and really gathering that mission to help move the world forward. Not just for myself, which was what it was in the past, not for just other people, but also for all of us, for the entire world, for everything. I really appreciate how you're illuminating that businesses do change and what's right for a season may evolve uh, into something else. And that we're, so we're always doing that process of alignment. Um, it doesn't mean that what you're doing before was wrong. It's just, you have a new alignment. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, this is so exciting. and so great. Thank you so much for being here. Andrea, tell us the best way for people to find you. Yeah, you can find me on DreaBrown.official on Instagram is probably the best way to find me. Or you could go to my website, DreaBrown.com. There's a lot of goodies over there, little freebies, stuff like that, meditations. And yeah, I would say those are the two best places. Awesome. And that's D-R-E-A. Yes, D-R-E-A. And then just brown like the color. Perfect. I'm Katie Valentine, and you've been listening to Soul Savvy Business. Soul Savvy Business is part of the Miracy FM podcast network, which also includes shows such as Just Between Coaches and Once Upon a Business. This episode was produced by Cynthia Lamb. I wrote this episode with Melissa Deal and Cynthia. Melissa Deal assembled the episode, and Danny Eaney is our executive producer. Post-production was by Post Office Sound. To make sure you don't miss great episodes coming up on Soul Savvy Business, follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you're listening right now. If you like the show, please do give us a star review. It is the best way to help us get these ideas out there to more people. Thank you, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>